Hey, Kinnan, shall we give him a big hand? And Marty Heikinen, a glorious day, a glorious race. Can you tell us about the race? That was a stable race and a perfect day, of course. Uh, what can I say? I had skied when I was, I started skiing when I was nine years old and I have had lots of bad days, lots of good days, but this was the perfect day and it's easier to continue forward. They have, uh, I have had a good team around me, I have done lots of high quality training I, and I have had good coach during my career and one of the good coaches standing over there. And <laughs> It, yes, area. it's a it's a little bit unreal situation. All these things quite, comes quite fast when you come to the finish line. And I'm that kind of person that uh, also bad things and good things. What is happening in my life? I take those things a little bit later, a bit uh, small small steps. And uh, I think this evening will be a special, and uh, I really have to enjoy of this day. You had a careful opening, but after that it was no doubt about it. It was your day. If you want to make good results in this kind of 50 kilometers, real endurance race, not in Mustard, you have to know your limits and ski as close as possible to your limit all the time. And uh, even if I had 8 or 10 seconds gap in the last kilometer, still I tried to... Uh, to ski really, really close to my limit and uh, make the best result as possible. And uh, it was perfect day also in my body and also with my skis. If you want to make gold medal, you really have to do perfect thing in, in every place. And I would say this team also have made a good work. So big hand for them and thank you. Best race ever, of course. Excuse me. Your best race ever? Yes. But still I have a that someday I can ski faster. Were there any vaccine challenges before we start? No. I didn't change anything with my skis. How did you calculate this is your own chances before we start? My way is that I don't calculate so much. I only check who is going half minutes in front of me and who is coming half minute behind me and uh, that's enough. If you really want to make good result this kind of time trial, you only have to concentrate on your own work and make it as good race as possible. How has it been to be a member of the Finnish ski team after the episode in 2001? It's a far away back history and in life there's lots of things what can happen and uh, I have nothing to do with this kind of things and uh, I think it's time to take time to take big step forward and continue uh, concentrate what is happening in this century and, and uh, in Finnish cross country sport we have done lots of work but still we really have to concentrate to do, to do things professional also in the track and also uh, around the track. If we want to make good, uh, good results in the future, we have to put more bet, more bet money, more time to make really professional work because another way uh, another countries will go faster than us. So we have lots of things to, to still to do, but I, I hope that this gold medal will make some things easier around the track to get the resource to our sport. And uh, how will you comment this uh, great performance on that today? I already said to the Pion that we have the same clothes, but we still don't the name on the paper. So we have something to do this, this evening. Uh... <laughs>
<laughs> you were lucky there. <laughs> well, what I would like to say is that uh, I'm, um, I think I have the whole uh, Norwegian uh, uh, audience with me uh, by saying that we are really impressed. Uh, and I was standing at the Tribune uh, today and uh, saw that and heard what uh, that the Norwegians were really... Uh, shouting and they were really uh, uh, giving you applause. Um, so I think I have the whole Norwegian uh, people with me when they say that you have uh, done an impressive race and you have beaten all our uh, big names, uh, the four guys behind the curtain here. So we are really impressed. And the, what the guy I had on my list, he's number 42 actually, he's Swede and called uh, Rickardson. so congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, and uh, really I have to say about the spectators and the audience that uh, if we still say something about last year 2001, you really can see that they are really giving a shit for the last 2001. One, because as a Finnish athlete, you really can see and hear the spectators that are waiting for Finnish cross country skiing. So let's keep the history back and continue to see what is happening in the future. Feeling good uh, the last um, yeah. two three days, um, and uh, was I was uh, offensive from the start and um, had good skis and pushed hard, uh, but. Uh, after seven kilometers, I was uh, starting to get tired, and uh, I might it take some seconds, and but I pushed all I had uh, the last kilometers. But um, I'm really happy with the silver. Did you during the struggle with the seconds see you like a world champion? Or? One, one more. The during the race that you struggled against the uh, Icons time, did you see yourself as a world champion sometimes? Of course, I was uh, seeing Mar Martin uh, yeah, 10, 15 seconds um, ahead of me, and uh, I get. Uh, uh, yeah, I was leading with eight seconds uh, when I came to the stadium, and was <coughs> passing 10. It was uh, equal, and I was thinking that if I could could reach Martin, then uh, maybe I had a chance for the goal because Martin was taking some seconds uh, from 10 to 12. But uh, I, I was, yeah, I was really tired, and I was, yeah, taking all my power in the last kilometers. But I'm really happy with the silver. There was nothing more to mobilize. No, it was nothing more, nothing left. What you thought about the race this morning when you wake up, saw the conditions, thinking about the wax testing? No, the the, the wax and the conditions are really. It's hard, it's, uh, it's a little bit difficult to get good skis. I was testing uh, seven pairs uh, yesterday after the women's race. And uh, you, can, you can have really much different uh, grip wax. You can have clister, you can have only dry wax, and you can have clister in the bottom and, and dry wax on the top. So I was testing all the uh, alternatives yesterday and also today. And I think we... we uh, made a good choice uh, and had really good skis today and uh, for sure I think also Motti had good skis but uh, it was a really difficult uh, difficult conditions and um, you felt that it was going slow, it was a, it was slow snow and yeah, a little bit difficult to get a uh, perfect grip. Let us go two years back, Libre 2009, you were in a very good shape then you were unlucky with the conditions. Yeah, also in Liberace on the 15, it was really tough conditions. Uh, it was snowing and we get, uh, went on rope skis. Martin went on wax and had the really bad skis. In Sapporo in 2007, it was snowing. And in, in uh, Torino, it was snowing and the Norwegian had bad skis. So it seems like uh, the 15K is uh, always difficult conditions. But. Um, I think I had quite good skis in Librex, but uh, the shape was not good enough. But today I was feeling great and and get all my. Yeah, I was doing my best race this season so far. Who was the last Norwegian to win an international uh, title in the uh, classic? 
I don't know. Do you know Björn? I didn't know until some minutes ago. <laughs> but, uh, somebody, no, somebody said that was in. No, no. Okay. But okay. I, I will have a small comment. I was really impressed. I was uh, quite confident that you was going to win the race. Uh, uh, in the middle of the race, you looked so good. And uh, it was astonishing how the other races had trouble with their skis. And it was so big gap between the races. Uh, I didn't expect that at all uh, and it's good to hear that you are satisfied because uh, the winner was he was really fast in the end yeah for sure i was um, i was starting quite hard and i, I felt that i had good skis uh, i was always seeing a martin ahead of me and i see i was taking some seconds maybe five seconds from yeah, to two kilometers Maybe some more seconds up to from this after in uh, at four. Um, I had a good glide. I was pushing really hard in the in the easy parts on the double pulling. But uh, <laughs> the power um, I had oh, in the end, I was to say really I was stiff. Or what you can say, I was oh, when I was passing ten kilometers and was all equal with the Motti, I, I thought this is going to be hard. But uh, I was, yeah, I was getting all my power out, and I was really satisfied with the silver. But the Olympics was a disaster. Yeah, so it was good to get the medal today. And uh, can you please tell us how this race was for you? Uh, it was uh, pretty much like uh, Elbar told. It's uh, very tough conditions out there today, and uh, the waxing. Uh, it wasn't easy. Uh, we s did a lot of trying and a lot of failing uh, towards the start today, and um, I think we uh, chose the right uh, right pair of skis today. And the waxers did an amazing job. But uh, the snow is uh, so slow, uh, like Elder told. So um, I didn't have a good feeling at all. <laughs> I started out and. Already in, <clears throat> in the first uphill, I felt like, oh man, this is going to be a tough race. So, like yeah, somebody told me, also in two kilometers, I looked uh, looked already really tired, and uh, that was also my feeling. So, I felt uh, didn't feel as good today as I felt uh, in the duathlon. So, um, I really had to struggle the whole 15 today. So, um, I'm really happy with the bronze medal because uh, I didn't believe I could uh, reach top 10 today, like in the first uh, four kilometers. So. I really had to struggle with my own myself and the tracks and uh, the crowd and did an amazing job cheering me uh, towards uh, this medal, so I'm really thankful. What do you think that be before this championship, Norwegians, they said that we have only one male race that can win the medals, and here you're coming both of you. Yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> Uh, we have always believed that uh, me and Elder can uh, fight but, uh, for the medals here. And um, we use each other pretty much in training, in uh, before races, before uh, when we test skis, we talk a lot uh, with each other just to, how do you want to make your race today? Um, he gives me some uh, advice and vice versa. So um, we use each other really good, I think. And that um, I always look uh, looked up to Elda in classic because I think he is an amazing uh, technique and uh, do very solid races. Uh, so when I was a kid and he was the big star, I always looked up to him. So it's good that he is a place ahead of me today. I've also heard that you are teasing Peter Lute very much on the training and that you both were needed to kill each other last autumn. I don't know if that's Side right, but um, for sure we uh, have a tough team tra training and um, uh, Petter is uh, for sure a tough uh, tra training buddy and also Elder, so for sure we have to, if we are going to be, be better, we have to train extremely hard and uh, if I'm going to be better, I have to keep uh, pushing uh, Petter on training because he's probably the best, so... Um, He's a amazing uh, team buddy, and uh, we use each other. Yeah. Um, I know that you know these tracks better than 
almost anyone. You have trained a lot there and uh, prepared. Uh, how was it to participate uh, in Holmkollen in these tracks, three rounds in these uphills? Uh, it looked really good. Uh, I saw that also you were a little bit tired in the end, of course. But uh, how how was it to really come and do what you have been dreaming to do? I felt like um, all the crowd was cheering for me today. <laughs> Uh, I did my first race here when I was nine years old. Um, after that, maybe I've d uh, done like 50 races in these uh, tracks, um, so I know them. And um, I felt like my all my buddies and um, the whole place which I live is called Rua was here today to cheer me uh, uh, towards this medal, and um, it, it was special. In the end, the four three kilometers I didn't see, I saw almost <laughs> black, uh, so um, the crowd and um, the home feeling did made a difference for me. There's no doubt about that uh, you uh, and Eldar are uh, running the two classical laps in the relay. You think? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> you too, I believe. <laughs> but who is going the first and who is going the second lap? That's up to the coaches for sure, but um, we have an agreement that uh, the best race racer uh, maybe goes the second lap. So I, uh, <laughs> maybe I'll learn how to. <laughs> Is that right, the right? I don't think it's, it really matters to go the first and second, but uh, we talk about it. And uh, today I was some seconds faster than, than Martin, but um, uh, yeah. I think it. Yeah, we will uh, we'll agree in some uh, some days, two days. And for sure, it's some tactics also towards the other teams. <laughs> okay, Hudson. Yes, in the middle. Many of the favorites did not have very good skis today. Would you have preferred they did, so it would have been an even playing field? <laughs> this is the charm of uh, cross country skiing. Uh, always the waxing is difficult, uh, you have to make the right choices and uh, for sure I think they have the same choices that we did and um, part of the game is choosing the right skis. 